focus. Ideate. Innovate. Enable. Today, business transformation is not just about profit, it's about the triple bottom line. Planet, people and profit. Sustainability is at the forefront of business transformation programs. Transformation Realized, powered by EY, is a brand new chapter where we bring to you inspiring stories of business transformation that have put human technology and innovation at the core. The penultimate episode of this series explores one of India's largest FMCG companies' pathway to sustainability and its future plans. Sustainable business transformation today is a key building block towards growth. Strategy, innovation and technology evolution are playing a critical role in driving success and leveraging the emerging trends to achieve scale and long-term growth. Now this week on a six-part series of Transformation Realized powered by EY, we bring you one such purpose-led organization, Hindustan Unilever Limited, which has made sustainability the cornerstone of everything it does to make sustainable living a common place. Please welcome Ritesh Tiwari, the Executive Director of Finance and IT and Chief Financial Officer of Hindustan Unilever. Now, Ritesh is also an active member of various industry bodies, including the Chairman of the CFO Council of FIKI. He is also the Senior Vice President of the Bombay Chamber of Commerce and Industry, an Independent Director on the Board of ONDC, as well as a member of the CII National Committee for CFOs. Also joining us today is Nitesh Meherotra, who is a partner EY ESG Consulting Practice, who is partnered with HUL on this sustainability journey. Nitesh, Ritesh, both of you, thank you very much for being with us here. Uh, and my Nitesh. pleasure. And, you know, it's our pleasure as well. And let me start with you, Ritesh, because, sure. you know, it's been a huge, uh, you know, transformation journey for you going on this sustainability path in 2010, uh, I think 2010 rather, That's right. you publicly announced your commitment towards this with the Unilever, uh, what you call the sustainable living plan. What's the journey been like? What the learnings have been along the way? Uh, Ritu, for us at Hindustan Unilever, our main purpose is to make sustainable living commonplace. We genuinely believe that business and the entire area of ESG is one and the same thing. Business is equal to sustainability mm -hmm. and sustainability is equal to business. Mm -hmm. That's how we define our business model. Uh, over the last decade, uh, we've done a lot of work in this space uh, because we believe that for any business which has to work and drive performance mm -hmm. and grow, it has to be built on a very strong foundation of sustainability. Mm -hmm. uh, our three core beliefs are companies with purpose last, brands with this, uh, purpose grow, mm -hmm. and people with purpose thrive. Mm -hmm. uh, if I look at last one decade of journey for us, a lot of work we have done. 2021, we became plastic neutral. Yeah. We have zero uh, waste which goes to landfill. Uh, we empower more than 150,000 women in rural areas and we made them micro entrepreneurs. They bring livelihood to their own house and be it the area on plastics, be it the area on water, be it the area on livelihood. All these areas we have really focused upon uh, in last more than a decade and the impact is visible in what we have driven. No, the impact is certainly visible when a large company like yours takes that move and you're a large conglomerate in the country. But, you know, what were the triggers, if I were to ask you, for accelerating this journey towards what you call the Unilever Compass? And, you know, what has the experience been like there? I think the main trigger for us is that a business which is sustainable also drives superior business performance. Mm -hmm. That belief is at the core heart of what we end up driving. Mm -hmm. uh, there are three pillars to what we end up doing. It starts with that we have to ensure that we're able to improve the health of the planet. Mm. We have to improve the health of people, well-being, and give them confidence. And third, equally important to this time, society is very important. How are we able to contribute to an equitable, diverse society? That role, as we do believe, we have to play as corporate citizen. Today, when I talk about uh, our own business as Hindustan Unilever, we have multiple areas in which we go on and make commitments. And it's the public commitments which we go on and publish in our annual report as well. Uh, let me start naming a few of them. If I look at the planet, a big job at this point in time for us to us, the whole world is committing to net zero. India has India's vision of reaching net zero by 2070. Uh, our Prime Minister has very eloquently spoken about that in COP26. At Hindustan Unilever, we have also committed to ensure that by 2039, we will be a net zero organization. But we have many milestones as part of the journey to reach where we wanted to reach. For example, our clear, clear goal at this point in time is by 2030, we will have half the amount of intensity of carbon emissions in our product range. Mm -hmm. An example to give. Mm -hmm. If we talk about waste, uh, we are already a plastic neutral organization by 2021. 
but we have to now take steps forward. How do we ensure that our entire business has usage of plastic which is either reusable or recyclable or compostable? That's a clear goal on which we are working upon. Mm -hmm. India has a massive water challenge and we run a very large program on creating water potential. Mm -hmm. Through Hindustan Unilever Foundation, we, have, we are aiming to create 3 trillion liter of water potential. That's the kind of impact we want to create in that area. Okay. Again, when it comes to the entire area of uh, social impact, hmm. we do believe that everybody who's associated with our business needs to earn a fair living wage. That's our goal that we want to ensure that we earn and deliver by 2030. So those are the few examples of what we want to really drive across, the, across various impact areas. Yeah, you know, uh, Nitesh, let me put the question to you then, because we're hearing large players like HUL talk about sustainability today. And it's important because they're not the only ones. We're seeing more and more companies adopt this, take this more seriously. If I were to ask you what, to your mind, has been the inflection point, uh, you know, for it to become a larger, more serious, non-negotiable matter rather today for companies. So, Ritu, the two biggest challenges facing humanity today are climate change and uh, social inequality. Hmm. Uh, the world is at a critical juncture and I think as Ritesh alluded to, uh, we not only have to walk the talk but run the talk. Hmm. Uh, uh, and I think the good news is that there is increased awareness and uh, I would say uh, synchronized actions across stakeholders, uh, whether it's the customer or the consumer. Uh, whether it's investors, employees, government, uh, and regulators. Uh, so let me unpack a little bit in terms of what we are seeing uh, as actions. Uh, yeah. I think first starting with uh, the customer or the consumer, uh, I think our recent insights from our Future Consumer Index uh, shows uh, that 43% of the global consumer want to buy more from organizations that are more sustainable uh, products and services which helps the society. and uh, they are also willing to pay more for certain categories. Uh, I think more importantly, what we analyze is that 64% of the consumer are willing to change their behavior uh, yeah. in a manner that it helps the environment and the society. So that's the, from a customer consumer standpoint. I think investors, we all know there is increased demand for consistent and comparable ESG performance, uh, whether it's the public investors or the private investors. Uh, and I think that's uh, very critical for us to assess the leaders in this space. Uh, uh, third, I would say, I think there is a lot of uh, discussion around employee value proposition. And I think uh, Unilever is a great example uh, where, uh, you know, organizations which are driven uh, by a purpose, uh, employees are more driven towards those organizations. Uh, I think government, there is a lot of uh, policy action as we are seeing from the Indian government. Uh, recently, as all of us saw, the government has outlaid uh, 35,000 crore towards green initiative and uh, we believe that will have a multiplier effect on the economy uh, to create new opportunities uh, and a new economy uh, for all of us. Uh, I, I think that's, that's a great action that we believe. Uh, good to hear those thoughts really and, and then some of the data coming behind that. But we have to take a very short break so stay with us. We'll be back in just a moment. Welcome back. We're in conversation with HUL and EY on HUL's sustainability journey. Ritesh and Nitesh, both of you, thank you very much for staying on with us. Ritesh, let me come back to you. You know, sure. like I said, it's a journey. Uh, there have been challenges. There must have been challenges along the way. There must have been some trends that emerged. But how did the team really come together to see some of the initial success that you've seen in this transformation journey? Yeah. Uh, Ritu, the entire ESG trend has now genuinely become a mega trend. Uh, the scale at which people have adopted ESG as a government, as business model, or as people are getting conscious, Nitesh, you were talking about, has really defined what our being today is. Uh, we know what uh, today, for example, if you look at 2019 onwards, last three years, there's five times increase in asset under management, which are focused on ESG business model. We know the commitment that we have as India uh, to reach net zero by 2070. Uh, Nitesh, you spoke about uh, the entire BRSR framework. I think India will end up taking first giant step on reporting of non-financial measures. These trends are pretty massive. Mm. Today, the entire senior leadership at Hindustan Unilever, we get rewarded for our long-term performance. This is how we're delivering on our sustainability progress index. Mm. If you're not able to do a good job there, remuneration of people get impacted. That's the level of seriousness we have given. Incentivizing. Absolutely. Uh, even on day-to-day -day operational basis, for example, mm. uh, when we evaluate our own proposals of capital allocation, 
There's a threshold which you define on internal carbon pricing. Such elements ensure that these are not left at a high strategic level, but they're embedded very well in the organization. Well, interesting to hear and, and important as well at this point of time, given like you said, we have to run the talk, not walk the talk anymore. Uh, but I think our audience, uh, Nitesh, should also be interested in finding out how did you go about navigating this journey? I mean, what were some of the steps that went behind the scenes uh, to realize this kind of a transformation? Yeah, so I think as, as Ritesh mentioned, it is, it is a complex journey. And I would say there are four phases to it, uh, Ritu. I think the first is uh, reframing strategy in a way that creates long-term value uh, for the enterprise. I think uh, it's about both uh, protecting value uh, as well as creating value. Mm. Uh, I think the second phase is really about accelerating transition. Uh, I think Ritesh touched upon it uh, in a manner that, you know, how do you create uh, change initiatives uh, uh, which addresses the underlying business case, uh, right, from a sustainability standpoint as well as from a business standpoint. Uh, uh, third, uh, I think it's very critical that how do you govern and operate in a manner to embed uh, within your ways of working uh, in an organization uh, to really sustain uh, these, these programs which are long drawn. Uh, and uh, I, I would say last and not the least, uh, Ritu, is, is, is trust. Uh, how do we, uh, I would say, communicate uh, in terms of the journey uh, that creates confidence with our stakeholder, yeah. uh, data that is traceable, uh, uh, as well as communicate the outcome uh, that this journey uh, is creating as we go along. Uh, I think at a more operational level, I would say there are three questions that all leading companies uh, needs to be uh, answering. Uh, uh, I would say first one is where are we now? Uh, sustainability is not new uh, to any organization. Uh, uh, so how do we really assess where are we in the journey, uh, you know, do a baselining, do a benchmarking uh, among our peers uh, to have a context of the maturity of the journey. Uh, where do we want to be? Uh, how do we accelerate our goals and uh, ambition? Uh, and third, I think it's very important uh, that uh, how do we get there, right? Because without a plan, it's, it's just a goal. Uh, and, and we believe, uh, as Ritesh alluded to, uh, governance uh, uh, and digitizations are the key pillars to help sustain, uh, you know, these program. Uh, so I would say, uh, in summary, uh, uh, the journey is complex. There are a lot of interdependencies and trade-offs uh, in a journey. And I think it's all about balancing uh, across multiple stakeholders, uh, as well as multiple capitals uh, that are involved uh, in the journey. So let me probably just, probably if you don't mind, it, let me build on to what Nitesh mentioned. I think if I look at the age of challenge, uh, big job to be done on non-financial reporting. For every CFO, every finance team today, mm -hmm. the systems, processes, technology, to Nitesh, your point, mm -hmm. have been all tuned for financial reporting. Mm -hmm. World, India today now is encountering the challenge, how do you end up doing a good job when you have to report across multiple non-financial parameters, mm -hmm. for which we have not set up systems reporting for the last several decades. But we have a CFO talking about sustainability, don't we? Uh, absolutely, absolutely. So I just tell you so what we do at Hindustan Unilever. Uh, amount of work that we do today in setting up capability mm -hmm. and uh, setting up digital capability to ensure that we're able to report on this information in a mm -hmm. fabulous, robust manner, mm -hmm. drive performance cadence in the organization. Mm -hmm. Because the challenge out here is today resource allocation cannot only be done across multiple priorities within the current time horizon. Mm -hmm. You have to allocate resources for today and tomorrow mm -hmm. in case you have to deliver these goals for tomorrow. Mm -hmm. And remember, these are very long commitments. They will go across multiple years. Mm -hmm. So we also have a challenge to ensure that your performance management systems will have to performance manage priorities and deliverables which are multi-year in this tenure. A business which is not sustainable in my view, in our view, will not thrive. Mm -hmm. So every CFO's job in my mind going forward is to make a winning business case for sustainability. Okay, I think that's an important message coming from the chief financial officer of a company. And I hope our audience takes note of that. But, you know, before we go into another break, let me, you know, come back to your journey. Uh, because it is a journey, like we said, I mean, it's a process that is still ongoing. But what are the early successes that you've been able to achieve, if you could throw some light on that as well? Yeah, I think many programs, uh, these area of entire ESG, you can't do your work for year one and then move on to something else. This will have to be multi-year, multi-decade programs. Mm -hmm. The water stewardship is a classic example. Mm -hmm. uh, we have already delivered 1.9 trillion liter of water potential. We upped our game now to 3 trillion liter. We've been acted on Prabhat. Prabhat is our community development uh, initiative. 
all the neighborhood areas of our factories, we work on that, be it on wastage, be it on uh, energy conservation or other good practices uh, on a, as a society that you need to do. So those are the areas that we have really made impact upon. Uh, the journey going forward will have to ensure that technology has to then basically unlock itself. And hence, in my mind, resources has to come not only from one organization, but across multiple organizations. Uh, ESG is not a zero-sum game. Uh, every company will have to lean in and join forces to ensure that we're able to make progress. All right. Uh, so on that note, I'm going to have to take another short break. Stay with us. We're going to be back in just a moment and continue the conversation here. Welcome back. We're in conversation with HUL and EY on this transformation journey. Thanks very much for staying on with us. And Ritesh, let me come back to you. Sure. Uh, you know, when we talk about sustainability, whose responsibility really is it? Is it the CEO? Is the chief sustainability officer? And now, even as a CFO, you're talking about it. So, you know, given how you've actively been involved in what is not essentially a finance role, what would your advice be to some of the other CFOs out there, uh, you know, trying to start on this journey or perhaps somewhere middle of the journey? What would your advice be? Well, I genuinely believe Ritu, that uh, ESG is everybody's business, hmm. from classroom to boardroom. Hmm. And as CFO, uh, I see ourselves as chief value architect. Uh, our job as CFO is to ensure that our business models are sustainable. Hmm. And we have to bring business and sustainability at a common plate together. We have a job that we create value, we also protect value. Hmm. For creating value in today's time of ESG, we have to work on winning business cases. Hmm. Equally, when it comes to protect value, Entire reporting area today, if I may use the word, it's like an alphabet soup. There are multiple global regulations, local regulations, and many areas. Ian and I have lovely partners who help us to uh, stitch and get more clarity in this area. Uh, as a CFO, there's a large job to be done to bring clarity in these areas mm -hmm. so that you don't end up making a reporting which is, does not truly reflect what business performance has been in the area of sustainability. So it's both creating value and protect value. In my mind, every CFO has to do in the area of ESG. So, you know, uh, if we were to talk about sustainability, uh, rather performance management, uh, what is the role of data and digital to your mind? Yeah, so Ritu, I think digitization and data are very critical to sustain sustainability, uh, I would say. Uh, and I think, uh, as Ritesh mentioned, uh, overall led by data, we need to have a single version of truth. Uh, and I would say near to real time uh, monitoring for actionable insights, uh, right? And I think. There are four goals, I think, as we're looking at it. I think, how do you first scientifically measure uh, and baseline where you are? I think that's very critical with the right standards uh, uh, right, that are involved. Uh, second is, how do you really benchmark and continuously monitor, right? It's not a one-time exercise. Yeah. Uh, how do we embed this into business as usual? Uh, I think uh, third is definitely, as you start to take actions uh, and, and initiatives, uh, uh, how are you improving the performance, right? To, to create value for the organization, I think is very critical. And uh, last and not the least, I think certainly how do you communicate in a manner uh, that creates confidence and, and also demonstrate uh, the underlying business case uh, that, that we're trying to solve. Uh, uh, I think uh, from a data standpoint, just uh, uh, at a more operational level, I think there are three uh, data models that we've been working with. Uh, uh, one, uh, as we look at data from sustainability, is uh, data that enterprise emits, right? So if you were to look at Unilever, uh, within the four walls of Unilever, right? Uh, right from buy, make, move, sell, uh, there's a lot of data that is being emitting, right? Uh, uh, across, uh, you know, the business transaction. I think that's one, uh, enterprise data, as we call it. Uh, but the larger chunk is certainly the supply chain data, right? The ecosystem, how do you really measure across your third parties and even your fourth parties, one would say. Uh, and I would say third uh, is even external data, right? So in terms of intelligence from a sectoral standpoint, uh, you know, what are the perceptions or, or assessment from an investor standpoint? What is it that your consumers are saying, right? So external uh, intelligence. Uh, and, and we believe the, uh, the, the third party data, uh, the external data and the intelligence and benchmarking I think it's very, very critical uh, to create comparative differentiation. And while you've given us plenty of insights, what would you say are the key learnings for India Inc. to take away for those who are embarking on this ESG journey now? So I think we, we are all learning, uh, I would say, uh, you know, in this complex roadmap, but certainly 
uh, I think is one is, as Ritesh mentioned, uh, sustainability is everyone's business. Uh, second, I would say all leading organizations uh, now need to be on a transition plan, uh, you know, on a pathway. Net zero, I think, is very, very critical. Uh, even we at EY, like Unilever, have taken our net zero target and we are on our journey. Uh, uh, third, I would say, I think sectoral inputs are very, very important, right? Uh, because we believe environmental and social are very sectoral while governance is agnostic. So, uh, you know, how do we sectorize this journey? Uh, I think teaming is very critical. It's a, it's a, it's a cross teaming sport, uh, right? You have to team across the organization, across uh, the ecosystem. I think so collaboration is very, very critical. Uh, uh, driving change is all about change management initiative and how do you positively influence, uh, uh, I think, to drive change is very critical. Uh, I think we talked about the role of data and digitization from day one uh, to help accelerate. I think that's very critical. And uh, I think as Ritesh touched upon, uh, I think the role of finance uh, as stewards yeah. uh, to really drive this across the organization is very, very critical. And to build trust within the journey uh, with the data-led approach is very critical. So that I would say, Ritu, are the key bits. Uh, Ritesh, if you want to add from, from no, your To sum it up, uh, in my mind, it will all boil down to a challenge of leadership. Uh, leaders will have to make a transition from giving the right answer to asking the right question in the area of ASG. Together, I think we need to make a very firm, strong commitment and make this decade count. Yeah. Count for the progress on ASG, not only as organization, but also as a country. And hence, in my mind, it's leadership that will ultimately make a difference in this area. No, absolutely. Well, and that is the takeaway for the role of the industry as well in what they could do to further uh, some of these important goals. On that note, uh, Ritesh and Nitesh, thank you very much. It's been a pleasure speaking to both of you. And I hope our audiences had a lot to take away, especially those that are just embarking on this journey, a very important one at that. So thank you. Thank you for your time, both of you. Thank you, Ritu. Thank, thank you, Ritu. Ritu. Thank you. Thanks, Ritesh. Thank you. Well, that was Hindustan Unilever's journey to make sustainable living a commonplace. Well, that's it then on this edition of Transformation Realized, powered by EY, which is the six-part series that we bring to you inspiring stories of business transformation powered by people, technology and innovation. So stay tuned to CNBC TV 18 for more.